Okay, so we're starting again where we left off with pre-lab. The pre-lab is on the right for the um, oxidation of iron wool. Going through again how to do this part now that we've done the lab. You need to have subtracted your beaker weight from your mass of your beaker plus you still all got a number. That number is unique to each one of you. That's the one that you're going to pull through. So on the first one, and we went through this really fast, I'm going to go through it again so you can sort of remember. You're going to take your amount, whatever it is, I'm going to call it X. So whatever your amount of iron that you started with, that's what you start here with. Okay? Then you're going to, let me change the pen real quick, make sure I got a small fan in. Okay? And you're going to change that into moles. That's the first thing you want to do. It doesn't matter where you do it on your paper, just do it somewhere. So in one mole of Fe, you get 55.845 grams of Fe. Grams of Fe will go out, and you get a number. Okay? I am going to call that number uh, Y. And that's my moles of Fe. I'm going to use that for all the rest of my calculations. That? That number, that Y number that I just found. Okay? So now, to do my first calculation, I am going to take and look at um, A, my balanced equation. For every two moles, I get two moles. Yes? Where are you getting the X, J, and F, from? This? That is a mass. The X is my mass of iron that I had. So everybody's going to have their own mass. So I use an X. That's a still wool. So we all start with that? Right. Okay. And then you're going to get a mole of F, E. Yes. So you're going to take your mass divided by 55.845 and you're going to get moles. And you do significant figures. Yep. It'll be small. Okay? So now, the next step is you're going to start all of these next ones with Y. Whatever your Y is, however many moles you figured out you have of iron. Okay, so Y mole of Fe. Then you're going to use these things up here, right up here, on the right hand side. Okay, for you it's on the left. We're trying to get to grams of the product of FeO. So for every two moles, of Fe, I get two moles, whoops, try to spell moles right, FeO. Then, moles will go out. You can try to squeeze it in there, you put it on a separate piece, it's up to you. Just make sure you staple it if you do it on a separate piece. We already have done the other part, which is right here. We've already added up the mass of one mole, so all we have to do is take this, and one mole goes on, or excuse me, one mole goes on the bottom, FeO, and on the top we put that 71.835 grams of FeO, moles of FeO go out, the twos will cancel, all I have to do is go whatever my mole of iron is times 71, and that's my answer for right here, whoops, not right here, right here, okay, so whatever my answer is right there. Then I'm going to do the same kind of thing for the next one. So for the next one, I'll use green so I can keep track of it. We're still going to start with Y, mol, Fe, and I'm still going to take, and but this one I'm going to use equation B, so I'm going to use this ratio right here. So for every four moles of Fe, I get two moles of Fe203, moles of Fe go out, now I come right here and use this number, that's how many grams are in one mole, I put one mole of Fe203 on the bottom, and the mass of Fe203 on top, moles go out. So here I'm going to go my y times 2 times this divided by 4, and that's the answer for this one. Okay? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to C. So we're still going to keep our y. 
And so we'll start with white. Let's get a new color here. We haven't done red. Um, so we're going to start with Y moles of Fe. And we're going to now use C, which here has 3 and a 1. So we're going to put 3 moles of Fe on the bottom to every 1 mole of Fe on the top. Our one and more of Fe three O four. Let's go out. Now we're coming down here to this C, and we're going to use this number right here to say that's how much is in one mole. And we'll put that number there. we plugged it through. Uh -huh, so you're going to go the amount of y times 231 and then divide it by 3. And then the last one, of course, same kind of setup. We use black this time. Start with y moles of Fe. And this time we're using equation D. It's got 1 and 1. So for every 1 mole of Fe, I get 1 mole of Fe2O, FeO2, try that. Mole goes out. Now we use this D down here. So 1 mole of FeO2 is 87.853 grams of FeO2. I'm going to times that through. And you can get an answer, put it up here. Grams of FeO2. Yes? So you don't use those numbers right there. What numbers? But it's right there. All of that column. Yeah, I used right here. That was that number. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to oh, stop and add them up. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. In a normal stoichiometry, I would have stopped and added it up. We just did it beforehand. Okay. So plug in your numbers. So we'll get there. We'll get there. No. So. Has so everybody got this part written down? Do uh, you know Yeah, but... Not right off top. Yes. Yeah, it's okay, we got ready. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you just can put grams. But you're you're okay to carry one extra. Go ahead and carry one extra. Okay. <coughs> No, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I wanted to do either. Try again. It's not liking that. There we go. Okay, so now on the back side, we've got the weight of the beaker and then we've got the weight of the, of the mass of the iron after, right? Whatever you had right here, you need to compare to these answers right here. And find out which one was the closest. Whichever one is the closest, then on number one, I'm going to put an X by. If it was the closest to this one, I'll put an X there. If it wasn't that one, maybe it was that one. 
If it wasn't that one, maybe it was that one. Anyway, put an X by which one you think it was, by what your data was and what you found. Yes? Um, I did that, but um, for analysis part two. Mm -hmm. Then you just ignore part one and you go on. Yeah, but um, I'll, I'll explain it. Okay. Well. So you're taking this answer, whatever it was right here, and comparing it, all you're doing is subtracting the, the beaker weight off what you had at the end. So oh, okay. 10 times 10 times. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And comparing it to what we just figured out. Which one was closest? This is what you should have got. This is theoretical. This is what you got in lab. Which one was closest? Was it A, B, C, D? Which one did you make? Okay, put an X by it. Then, then you have this question right here, right? Okay, if the real formula were, okay, so it's, it's just hypothetically, if it was this, Use equation C and calculate backwards to find out the amount of iron wood bowl that you actually converted. So you would take your amount, that X amount that we had, that was grams, that we've already changed to moles, right? The, the Y moles, remember that from the front just a minute ago? You can take that Y moles now and using equation C, go back and find out. Oh, excuse me. I just messed up. Let me do this again. We're not going to do one of those. We're going to use the equation that was on the back. Whatever you got in number was 11. Right at the top. Yeah, number 11. What did you get in number 11? So whatever you had in number 11 grams, we're going to assume that was Fe304. So this is from number 11, whatever you had. And we're going to change that now from grams to moles, and we'll use it, that little thing that we already added up on the front. So in one mole of Fe304, how many grams do we have? Look at the front. How many grams down at the bottom? Point what? Okay, now we're looking in grams. Now we can look back at equation C. Look back at equation C, and what is the number in front of Fe304? Okay, what's the number in front of moles of Fe? Equation C, what's in front of Fe? Three. Okay, so that gets us out of moles of Fe304, and now we're going to moles of iron. One mole of iron, 55.845. Plug it through. Plug and chuck. So whatever you had in 11 times 3 times 55.845 divided by 231. Okay, got it? You do exactly what's there. It should be a number less than what you weighed, right? At first. So if I weighed out six grams to start with, I should be under that number when I get the answer for number two. Yeah, once you have the answer, and when you're done, attach all the paperwork that you've done with it. 
Okay, the next one just asks, although some iron is always lost, because you know when we did the, the iron, it was flying, right? Sparklers. They don't, they don't all land right where they're supposed to, where you could gather them, right? Some of them are on your hands and your feet and all over the place. Okay, one way to look at what, if, what, ha, what happened is to study the weight gain, which would be the difference between the mass of iron and the mass of the oxidized iron. So that was your mass originally, and what your mass was after. So you take and subtract those, and that should be the oxygen, right? That was added, because the iron didn't go away, other than what you lost. So take and look at your first one, which was what? Question number four, and you subtract number 11. Wait, four minus 11, or 11 minus four? Well, four should be smaller, so it'll be 11 minus four. It says five minus four, 11, but it should be it should be 11 minus 4, not 5. Okay, so this should be number 11 minus number 4. And that gives you your answer in grams. And that will be your grams of O2. How much oxygen was added? Okay. 11 minus, oh, is that, you got 1 gram. Okay. All right, then on the other side there, number four, going up, everybody staying with me? We're doing okay? Number four, we said to, I should go forward a page, so we have less garbage. Okay, number four says that the weight gain was a mass of oxygen. See how, I didn't take the picture. See how much iron really reacted? Okay, so um, use the equation C again, mold and mold, and show the calculation. So you're going to take your amount of oxygen, whatever it was. Okay, so whatever your amount of oxygen is, again, I'm just going to put a circle in the next. And you're going to go back to grams of iron. Come on. So we're going to go 1 mole, O2. 2 times 15.999 grams oxygen. Grams go out. Now, what was in front of equation C? Oxygen on the back side. A 2. A 2. What was in front of O2? I mean F. FE. 3 more FE. Okay. And then you need to just change it back to grams. So one mole of Fe, fifty-five point eight four five grams of Fe. Okay. Yes. The uh, two to three comparison. Uh huh. Is that for like what they got? From Equation C. What was in front of it? In front of what oxygen. Uh huh. In front of oxygen. In front of Fe. For the equation C. Is there a 4 in front of it? C? Yeah, there's a 4 in front of it. No, there shouldn't be. There's a 2. C, right? For C, look at the balanced equation. What's in front of O2? Should be a 2. Okay. So then you're going to get the answer right there. That's how much reacted. Then you just take your... And 4 minus what you just got up here, this right here, it goes right here. Subtract the 2 and you got the mass that didn't react. Yes? Not the grams of O2. We are in there up here, we're going to have grams of Fe. This right here is from the beginning, You're what you started with. This is not analysis, it's number 4, what you started with and mass line to start with, minus what we just figured out here. So number four from the beginning minus analysis three gives you what didn't react. Yes? What number is the X? The X came from the one we just did. The number three. So number three, whatever you had in analysis. Okay. All right, we're almost there. Okay, we are going to put that in there. We just did number five because we did before that we did number four. We got the answer from number four, and then we take our number. Th yeah, that's number four. This should be analysis number four. Sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so your answer to number three is your oxygen. Then you change the oxygen to iron, and now you're finding number four on the front from number four on the back and get your answer. Okay, is everybody with me, sort of? I'm confused how you got five. How I got number five. Okay, on the front side of your paper, where we started, number four, that answer. Okay, take that answer from the front and minus it from number four of the analysis on the back. Okay. So would that okay. analysis be the answer to C for the analysis? No, no, I've got, we already did that. That's when you look at this, which one of these came closest to it? Pick the closest one. Okay. Yes. I think, it, well, just in the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, to get this, mm -hmm. I think I may have put it in the wrong mask. Was it this mask or this mask? Number four, number three? It was your mass of iron, whatever the mass of iron was. So it's probably it's number four. It's four? It's four. Okay, so on the last one, all you have to do is take analysis number, should have been four. Divided by 5, C. 5, C from the front. This is from the front. Okay, so the number you got in the front that you calculated times 100. So number 4 from the analysis divided by what you had on the front times 100. Huh? <laughs> So, number f 5C, what you got on the front, that's going to take this divided by 5C. Okay, so given at least two significant figures, it should be however many you, w you weighed out. Yeah, something's off on that. That shouldn't be that small, though. I think you did a calculation error there, because it should be between these two. Yeah, this will be as a percentage. Okay, and the last one is conclusion. You finish it. Okay. So just from the X. But which one's closest? That's it. Okay. Yep.